In this video, I will explain the last element of a probability space, the probability measure P. A probability measure assigns each set in the sigma algebra F a probability, which is a number between 0 and 1. Ok, let's take a look at the mathematical definition of a probability measure. Let omega be a non-empty set. Let f be a sigma algebra over the set omega. Then a function p from the sigma algebra f to the closed interval 0, 1 is called a probability measure if it satisfies the following two properties. The measure of the entire set is equal to 1. That means the probability of omega is equal to 1. P is sigma additive. That means if the sets AI are a countable collection of pairwise disjoint sets in the sigma algebra F, then the probability of the union of these sets is equal to the sum from i is equal to 1 to infinity of the probabilities of AI. We use this symbol here, the union symbol with the dot in the middle, to denote a disjoint union of some sets. So a probability measure is a function p from the sigma algebra f to the closed interval 0, 1, so that p is sigma additive and p of omega is equal to 1. The definition of a probability measure is a special case of the definition of a general measure. The definition of a measure looks like that. Let x be a non-empty set. Let f be a sigma algebra. Then a function mu from the sigma algebra f to the closed interval 0 infinity is called a measure if it satisfies the following two properties. The measure of the empty set is equal to 0. So mu of the empty set is equal to 0. And mu has to be sigma additive. Ok, this is the definition of a general measure. But as I said before, we will focus on probability measures. So you can forget the definition of a general measure for now. Before we take a look at some easy examples of probability measures, I want to show you some basic properties and calculation rules for probability measures. Let omega f p be a probability space. Let a, b, a1, a2 and so on be some sets in the sigma algebra f. Then, if the sets a1 to an are pairwise disjoint, then the probability of the finite union of these sets is equal to the sum from i is equal to 1 to n of the probabilities of ai. That property is called finite additivity. This follows directly from the sigma additivity of p. Just set ai is equal to the empty set for i greater than n in the sigma additivity property. The probability of the complement of A is equal to 1 minus the probability of A. This follows from A. Because 1 is equal to the probability of omega, which is equal to the probability of the union of A and the complement of A. But now the sets A 
and the complement of A are disjoint. So this is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of the complement of A. The probability of the empty set is equal to zero. This follows from B. Just choose A is equal to omega in B. If A is a subset of B, then the probability of A is less than or equal to the probability of B. This follows from the fact that B is the union of the sets A and B without A. This works out because A is a subset of B. These two sets, A and B without A, are disjoint, so it follows from small a that the probability of B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B without A, and this probability here is greater than or equal to zero. The probability of the union of the sets A and B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of the intersection of the sets A and B. To see this, just take a look at the following picture. By adding the probability of A and the probability of B, you add up the probability of the intersection twice. So you have to subtract the probability of the intersection. The probability of the countable union of the sets AI is less than or equal to the sum from i is equal to 1 to infinity of the probabilities of the sets AI. This property is called sigma subadditivity. I won't prove the sigma subadditivity. Let's take a look at some easy examples now. Let omega be the set that consists of the numbers 1 and 2. Let f0 be the trivial sigma algebra, so f0 consists of the empty set and omega. And let f1 be the discrete sigma algebra, so f1 is equal to the power set of omega. We define a function p the following way. p of the empty set is equal to 0, and p of the subset a is equal to 1 otherwise. This function p is a probability measure on f0 so the trivial sigma algebra. But the function p is not a probability measure on f1, so the power set of omega. Why is this not a probability measure on the power set? Because 1 is equal to the probability of omega, which is equal to the probability of the disjoint union of the subsets 1 and 2, which is equal to the probability of the subset 1 plus the probability of the subset 2. Now this here is equal to 1. And that here is equal to 1, 2. So this here is equal to 2. Now we have 1 is equal to 2. So this function p can't be a probability measure on the power set. Let's take a look at another example. Let omega be a finite set. Let the sigma algebra f be the power set of omega. Then p of a defined as the cardinality of a divided by the cardinality of omega 
for all subsets A of omega is a probability measure on the power set. This probability measure is called Laplace probability. Let's prove that this here is a probability measure. So first of all, this here is always a number between 0 and 1, which should be clear, because A is a subset of the finite set omega. Now we have to check two things. Firstly, P of omega has to be equal to 1, which should be clear too because p of omega is equal to the cardinality of omega divided by the cardinality of omega, which is equal to 1. Secondly, p has to be sigma additive. In this case, sigma additivity becomes finite additivity, because the sigma algebra is finite. So let's assume you have a finite union of pairwise disjoint sets. Then the probability of the union is equal to this here. 1 divided by the cardinality of the set omega times the cardinality of the finite union of the sets. The sets AI are disjoint, so the cardinality of the union is equal to the sum of the cardinalities of the sets AI, and this is equal to the sum of the probabilities of the sets AI. So P is sigma additive. We have shown now that the function P is a probability measure. Let's take a look at one last example. Let omega be some non-empty set and let f be a sigma algebra over omega. Let x be a given element in the set omega. Then we define pxa for any set A in the sigma algebra the following way. Pxa is defined as 1 if x is in A and 0 if x is not in A. This function is a probability measure. It is called the Dirac measure and usually denoted like that. You can try yourself to show that this function here is a probability measure. Let's take a look at the so-called discrete case now. Let omega be an at most countable set. Let the sigma algebra f be the power set of omega. Let small p be a function from omega to the closed interval 0, 1, such that the sum over all x in omega of small p of x is equal to 1. This sum here makes sense, because omega is at most countable. The sum is either finite or a convergent series. The notation over all x in omega also makes sense, because in case of absolute convergence, the order of summation doesn't matter. We define a function p from the power set to the interval 0, 1 the following way. p of a is defined as the sum over all x in a of p of x for all subsets a of omega. Then this function p is a probability measure on the power set. And every other probability measure on the power set looks like that. That means if we consider an at most countable set omega 
Together with the power set as the sigma algebra, we know how the probability measures look like. They look like that. Let's take a look at an easy example. Let omega be the set that contains the numbers 1, 2 and 3. Let the sigma algebra f be the power set of omega. Let's consider the following function p from omega to the interval 0, 1. p of 1 is equal to 0 0.4 p of 2 is equal to 0 0.4 and p of 3 is equal to 0 0.2. Then the sum over all x in omega of p of x is equal to p of 1 plus p of 2 plus p of 3 which is equal to 0 0.4 plus 0 0.4 plus 0 0.2 which is equal to 1. That means p of a defined as the sum over all x in a of p of x for all subsets a of omega is a probability measure. For example, the probability of the subset that contains the numbers 1 and 2 is equal to small p of 1 plus small p of 2 which is equal to 0 0.8. I will now try to generalize the last result a little bit. Let omega be at most countable again. Let f be a sigma algebra over omega. If you have watched my video about sigma algebras, you should already know that f is generated by a partition of omega. That means f is generated by a partition of omega. And this here is equal to the collection of all the at most countable unions of elements taken from the partition C. Now we consider a function small p from the partition C to the closed interval 0, 1, such that the sum over all small i in the indexing set capital I of small p of the element Ci is equal to 1. Now we can define a function p the following way. p of a, which is equal to p of that most countable union, of some sets Cj is defined as the sum over all small j in capital J of small p of the sets Cj for every subset A in the sigma algebra F. This function p is a probability measure. I haven't checked this result completely, but I think everything should work out fine. Now that we have taken a look at the discrete case, we will consider an example over an uncountable set. Let omega be the closed interval 0, 1. The sigma algebra f is the Borel sigma algebra over the interval 0, 1. The Borel sigma algebra is the smallest sigma algebra which contains all open sets of the closed interval 0, 1. Now, measure theory tells us that there is a unique measure, lambda, with the property that it assigns each interval its length. So lambda of the interval a, b is equal to b minus a. This unique measure is called the Borel measure. In this case the measure lambda is a probability measure because lambda of omega is equal to lambda of the closed interval 0, 1 which is equal to 1.
you can interpret this probability space the following way. A number between 0 and 1 is chosen at random, uniformly. Lambda tells you the probability that the chosen number is in the interval a, b. The larger the interval, the larger the probability. Ok, I hope you now understand probability measures and probability spaces in general a little better. If you liked this video, please consider subscribing to my channel. That would help and motivate me to keep creating videos.